So in the last class, we were actually uh, zeroing on this uh, steady state 1D conduction in cylindrical system. Uh, can you all see the screen? Yes, sir. Visible, sir. So we actually said that the basic governing equation is the one by r d by d r of k r d q by d r. So uh, we actually integrated it in the boundary conditions. Can everyone uh, mute their mics? Uh, yeah, at uh, R1, uh, we know uh, the boundary condition as T1, R, R is equal to R2, T2. And we said that since there is actually in the solution, there is actually ln R is actually coming. So that means when R is equal to zero, so that is actually going to be exploded. Okay, or it is actually not going to be unbounded result we are going to get. So that means <coughs> either C1 need to be actually zero. If you are actually having a solid cylinder, then there is actually a chance that R is equal to zero. So in that case, uh, we need to actually make C1 uh, should be actually zero when only we are actually getting a bounded result. So in that case, you can see that T is equal to a constant value. So for a solid cylinder, we are actually not going to have any heat flux through that. A steady state heat flux, we cannot actually have for a solid cylinder. Okay? So T is equal to constant means what there is no gradient, so there is actually no heat flux. In order to have a steady state heat flux, so we need to actually have a energy in and energy out. So for a radial conduction or radial variation, energy in and energy out, you will actually get only for a hollow cylinder. So we said, and uh, we actually uh, got that energy or temperature equation. And then <coughs> we actually found the uh, heat flux and we actually wrote the heat flux in terms of uh, thermal resistance, which is ln R2 by R1 divided by 2 pi LK. So that is actually the uh, conduction resistance for uh, in the cylindrical system for radial heat conduction. And we said we can actually have use the same thing for the analysis of uh, temperature with the convective boundary conditions and all. If you are actually having a composite cylinder or multi-layered cylinder, we can actually use the idea of uh, uh, resistance in series. Uh, yeah, and then the conductive overall convective heat transfer, we actually said, so it can be actually defined based on A1, A2, etc. Either method, we are actually going to get the same values. Then we are actually seeing this uh, critical thickness because we said uh, in a cylindrical system, if you are actually adding more and more insulation, obviously the conduction resistance is increasing, but the convective resistance is actually decreasing. Okay. So uh, for a unit length, we actually uh, uh, say what is actually this total resistance, which is actually summation of convective to uh, conduction resistance. We differentiated it once and we actually got a value R T is equal to K insulated by H. Okay, we actually assume that that is actually minimum uh, value in which can, uh, or it is actually the maximum of uh, heat conduction. But we actually uh, saw that that is actually the value in which the total resistance goes to minimum value. Okay, R2 uh, and that minimum value at which uh, resistance is actually minimum or uh, heat transfer is actually maximum is actually known as uh, critical resistance, a uh, critical radius. So we actually said for a critical radius, the resistance comes to be minimum, okay, and therefore the heat transfer is actually maximum. So any uh, diameter, whatever uh, the uh, radius of the insulation, it should be actually higher than that of the critical radius, so that even if you are actually adding a little bit more, <coughs> that is again going to reduce the total the total uh, heat transfer. And we said that uh, for uh, uh, k is equal to 0 0.03 and h is equal to 5. So that means the regular conditions of, for a regular ambient condition, the critical radius is somewhere around 6 mm, which is actually very small compared to any of the pipe systems or uh, uh, regular flow conditions. Okay? So therefore, whatever the insulation you are actually going to add, it is always going to be more than the critical radius. And we don't have too much worry about that. And then, uh, yeah. So, and then we actually saw one alternative method for uh, calculation of heat flux or heat transfer as well as the temperature. Okay. He said that till now we were actually uh, from the basic equation, from the governing equation we were actually doing. We can also uh, uh, try it uh, based on the uh, Fourier law itself. Okay. So, 
So this is just an alternate method. You can actually use it for a Cartesian system, cylindrical system, or even for spherical systems. So you can actually see that Q can be actually given as minus K dt by dx, where A is equal to 2 pi R. So if you actually integrate it, you are actually going to get the Q equation, which is same as that of we actually derived based on the governing equation. And uh, uh, we are actually, uh, with the condition that Q is actually the same throughout, we can again uh, derive the equation of the temperature, which is actually the same as that of what we actually saw. Okay. Yeah. So that's where uh, we actually stopped in the last class. Yeah. So any doubt still here? Yeah. No, okay. sir. No, sir. So now we are actually going to uh, see further onto the cylindrical systems with heat generation. Okay. Or we can actually say, Cylindrical system, cylindrical system with heat generation. So what have we discussed till now? It is actually uh, without heat generation. Okay. So we are not going into detail for uh, with heat, without heat generation and uh, with uh, heat generation, etc. We are actually not going into detail. <coughs> uh, yeah. So we can actually see that uh, this kind of uh, uh, yeah, the examples are like uh, uh, electric systems in which uh, uh, current electric current is actually passing through a cylinder or wire. Okay, wire is actually kind of cylinder, and again the fuel rods, heat generation in a fuel rod in nuclear reactors. These are actually the examples for that. Okay, so we can see that heat generation, heat generation in one D cylinder, one D cylinder. Uh, cylinder systems are conditions for are conditions for current passing through wire current passing through wire okay passing through wire or heat generation in fuel road uh, fuel road in nuclear reactors nuclear reactor etc okay yeah so here you can actually see that uh, the wire as well as the nuclear reactors etc <coughs> they are all solid <coughs> cylinders <coughs> unlike the convective uh, unlike without heat generation here we can even go for the solid cylinders okay because here generation is actually there so there is not necessarily a heat in is actually required okay so a heat in is actually not required for, uh, for a heat uh, or a steady state to actually occur because here we are having the heat generation. Okay, so these are actually solid roads. So these are uh, solid roads. These are actually the solid roads. Okay, so therefore, so therefore, further analysis, further analysis. Can be conducted. Can be conducted on a solid road. Okay. For that analysis, we can actually do on a solid road. So yeah, obviously we can actually give for a boundary conditions like in, in inner convective and outer conductive convective with the heat generation. So that also you can actually do, but it is actually a bit involved. Uh, algebra is actually a bit involved, but obviously we can actually do. Okay. So the same, uh, only the boundary conditions are actually going to be uh, different and you can actually do all this. Okay? But you can actually see that for more practical situation, what we have is actually the solid cylinder. So that's why we are actually going uh, for a further analysis for the solid cylinder. Okay. So what is actually the basic equation? 1 by R, D by DR of KR, DT by DR. Okay. So KR, DT by DR plus heat generation is equal to zero. Okay. We are actually assuming our uh, uh, A to be constant for constant K, for constant K, we can actually rewrite as uh, D by DR of R DT by DR okay, is equal to minus heat generation by uh, uh, K into R. Okay, 
So we are actually going to integrate it uh, twice so that we can actually get the uh, equation. Okay. So integrating once, you are actually going to get integrating once, you are actually going to get uh, r into dt by dr is equal to minus q by k r square by 2, q, q generation by k r square by 2 plus c1. So integrating twice, integrating twice, you are actually going to get, uh, okay. so this one uh, we can actually write as, uh, yeah, so this one you can actually write as Q generation by K into R by 2 plus C1 by R. Okay, So this R we can actually take, dt by dr you can actually write, okay. So this is how you can actually write. So now integrating this one, we are actually going to integrating, integrating twice, integrating again, we are actually going to get uh, minus Q by uh, K into R square by four plus C1 L and R plus C2, okay? So this equation, we can actually give us that. <coughs> So uh, since we are actually talking about the solid cylinder, uh, so this is actually our condition. So this is actually our solid cylinder. Okay. Okay. So this is actually our solid cylinder. It's a radius we are actually giving as R zero, and the surface temperature we are actually giving as T S. Okay. Obviously, this length we can actually give us L length we can actually give us it. <clears throat> uh, so therefore the boundary condition we can actually see that at r is equal to r0 t is equal to ts okay so that is actually the one boundary condition but we need a second boundary condition also uh, here we can actually see that there is actually no boundaries so there is actually no second boundary since we are actually talking about the radial direction so, but we can actually have a second boundary condition at the center. Okay. So, can anyone tell me what can be the, actually the uh, condition that we can actually give at the center? So, in the previous Cartesian system, in the previous Cartesian system, if you remember, we actually took this as actually the cylinder, center, and uh, when we actually said on both sides, we were having the same temperature. So in that case, we said that the temperature profile is actually going to be symmetric. Okay. So can you relate uh, this condition to the solid cylinder? Can we somehow relate that? Is it possible to relate these two? Is it possible to relate this Cartesian system where uh, we are having symmetric condition on both sides to that of a cylinder, cylindrical system in which uh, the surface is actually at a constant temperature TS? Is that uh, both the same conditions? Uh, maybe, sir, we can consider it as a rectangle. Like, if it, so it will be like axisymmetric line yeah. for the cylinder. Yeah. Surface. yeah. So here, the center, it is actually axisymmetric. And you can see that it is actually symmetric. The uh, boundary condition is actually symmetric throughout. Corresponding respect to the central axis, uh, central axis symmetric axis, the uh, boundary condition is actually symmetric throughout. Okay? So therefore, towards the center, we can actually take the condition which is actually the symmetry. Okay? So that is actually the second condition that we can actually take. Okay? So for, for the second condition, second boundary condition okay. uh, for the second condition uh, we need we need to analyze need to analyze analyze situation at situation at x is equal to zero okay so we can actually say that as surface boundary condition r is equal to r0 
is same throughout is same throughout same throughout same throughout a symmetry condition exists at the center a symmetry condition a symmetry condition exists at center okay and what is actually symmetry condition symmetry condition we can actually say dt by dr at r is equal to 0 dt by dr is equal to 0 okay so that's what we can actually see <clears throat> so first we are actually going to put this condition so uh, okay. so r is equal to 0 condition r is equal to 0 condition into what is the equation we said it is actually 30 okay into 30 okay. but uh, what is actually dt by dx dt by dr we know over here okay so dt by dr we can actually see that uh, uh, dt by dr at uh, r is equal to 0 we can actually write as here it is actually written dt by dr is q by k r by 2 plus c1 by r is equal to q by k into 0 by 2 plus c1 by 0 okay so here uh, it should be actually equal to 0 so this is actually possible only if c1 is actually 0 that means that term doesn't exist at all okay so there shouldn't be actually a term which actually comes 0 below so here also from the basic equation also we can actually see that C1 into L and R comes into picture. So as previously we said, so for a solid cylinder, obviously R is equal to 0 also comes into picture. So that is also part of this domain. Okay. So therefore, this solution is actually bounded only if C1 is actually 0. That is actually the uh, only reason that we can actually come up with. Okay. So this is actually unphysical. This is unphysical. Unphysical unless c1 is equal to 0 okay, if c1 is equal to 0 so then everything is actually going to be uh, uh, everything is actually going to be fine okay also we can actually say that also uh, l and r uh, need to be removed from the equation removed from 30 removed from equation 30 as the system is actually solid as the system is system is solid cylinder okay so this is actually possible so that uh, uh, this is possible this is possible possible if c1 is equal to zero so either of these methods we can actually see that uh, c1 should be actually zero then only our uh, a <coughs> result will actually match okay so that's what uh, our equation so therefore we can actually see that uh, t is equal to minus q by 4k r square 4k r square plus c2 so that is actually going to our equation okay we can actually call it as a uh, 30a so now we are actually going to put some so there is only now uh, only one unknown is actually there okay so therefore we can actually say that at r is equal to r0 t surface is actually ts okay, is equal to minus q by uh, 4k r0 square plus c2 so therefore c2 is equal to ts plus q by 4k r0 square so therefore you can actually write as t is equal to minus q by 4k r square plus uh, ts plus q by 4k r0 square it is not simply q q generation okay two generation two generation two generation by k square okay we can actually <coughs> uh, rearrange it so what we are actually going to get is two generation divided by 4k into r0 square if you take common we will actually get 1 by r square by r0 square plus ts okay so this is actually the 
a solution for temperature. So this is how the temperature variation occurs in cylindrical system with the heat generation. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> suppose if you are actually going to have the condition such that uh, for a convective boundary condition is actually going to be there. Okay. If you are actually going to have a convective boundary condition T and H infinity okay, and H is actually passing over there. So we actually said that how we can actually do this. So for convective boundary condition, convective boundary condition, boundary condition. So what uh, what is actually the heat out? What is actually the Q convected out? Q convected out is equal to Q generated. Okay, so Q generated is what the Q converted out. Here you can actually see that what we are actually talking about is actually solid cylinder. Okay, so there is no heat in in this condition. So there is no heat in in this condition. So we know that at the center itself we actually said symmetry condition because there is no heat in. So whatever the heat that is actually going out in all the direction, so that is what the heat generated with it. Okay. So therefore, you can actually say what is actually the heat generated? Heat generated per unit volume into volume. What is actually the volume? Volume is equal to pi r zero square into L. Okay, so because L is actually the length. So that is actually the total volume of the cylinder. Here you can actually see H into uh, surface area. 2 pi r zero L into T s minus T infinity. So from here, we can actually get TS as pi pi cancels, uh, 0, 1 cancel, L, L cancel. Okay. So you will actually get T infinity plus 2 by 2H into R0, Q generated by 2H into R0. Okay. So that is what the, uh, yeah, so this is actually the uh, T surface if you are actually having a convective boundary condition. So convective boundary condition means we don't know what is actually the surface temperature. Okay. So we know only the convective boundary condition, convective heat transfer as well as the ambient temperature. But we know what is actually the volume of uh, volume heat generation. So based on that, you can actually calculate Ts. Okay. So once you calculate Ts, you can actually calculate what is actually the temperature variation. Okay. Uh, yeah, so by differentiating it again, uh, you can actually see what is actually the heat flux at each and every location that also you can actually do. Anyway, we are not going to see that. Okay. So if you want, you can actually uh, differentiate it. Uh, Q is equal to minus K dt by dx. Okay. So uh, we, if you are actually going to differentiate it, you can actually see what is actually the heat generated or heat flux at each and every location. So you can see that that is also varying with uh, L because more and more it, it is actually generated as it is actually moving. Up. Okay. So that is actually uh, the uh, uh, dt by dr. So that is actually the Q heat flux at any particular location. Okay. So that's how that is actually what uh, we we should actually uh, see from this uh, convex uh, cylindrical systems. So any doubts still here? Okay. So we have actually seen uh, the uh, uh, general temperature variation, heat flux, and then uh, the uh, uh, thermal resistance. We actually saw critical radius. We actually saw an alternate method as well as with the heat generation. We actually saw. Okay. So now, uh, so we actually have seen now the basis of basis of heat transfer in the uh, uh, 1D, 1D diffusion in Cartesian system as well as the cylindrical system. Okay. So now we are actually going to see the spherical system, the same procedure we have to actually follow. So we have to actually see what is actually the uh, governing equation, then integrate it based on the boundary condition, you get the temperature, then you have to find the heat flux. So based on that, you can actually find the uh, thermal resistance, okay? And uh, uh, add the thermal resistance, uh, convective resistance with that of the conductive uh, convective resistance, 
and then I differentiate it with respect to the radius and then we will get the critical radius. Okay, the same procedure you can actually do. So that is just a repetition. So what I'm actually going to do is I will actually give uh, the uh, values, the temperature radiation as well as the resistance, etc. Okay, so uh, if uh, you can actually try deriving it, if you are, if you have any doubts in between, you can actually ask. Okay, yeah. So uh, we are not going to waste much time on this spherical. I will just uh, give the uh, basic definition or basic uh, uh, basic equation sample. Okay, so the steady state. Steady state, uh, 1D heat conduction, 1D heat conduction in spherical coordinate. Spherical coordinate system. Okay. So 1D means, so 1D means T is actually a function only of R. So only radial variation, only radial variation is actually considered. Only radial variation is actually considered. Okay. So which is actually the basic governing equation for this? Uh, which class we actually derived? Anyone remember? <clears throat> Yeah. So this is actually the basic equation we are talking about. Okay. So in this, um, which variation we have to actually take? Which term? First term, or second term, or third term, fourth term, fifth term? Which all terms will actually comes into picture without heat generation? Only the first term, sir. Only the first term. Very good. Okay. So only the first term we need to actually consider. That means one by r square. Okay. So d by uh, dr of k r square dt by dr is equal to c okay so if you're actually assuming constant k obviously this r square also we can actually take up on the right side k also we can actually take up on the rhs so for constant k for constant k we can actually see d by dr of uh, r square dt by dr is equal to zero okay <clears throat> so uh, here uh, you can actually integrate it twice okay so here you, you are actually going to have a r square over here this first integration you will actually get uh, t is equal to uh, yeah dt by dr you will actually get as a minus uh, uh, yeah c1 by uh, r square you will actually get okay so if you're actually going to integrate it again, then you can actually see that since R square is there minus two by uh, R n minus one, etc., you are actually going to get under, uh, integrating it since it is actually integration, you are actually going to get uh, n raised to n plus one divided by n, n plus one, right? So therefore you are actually going to get as uh, T is equal to, so T is equal to, uh, minus c1 by r plus c2 okay so this is actually the equation we are actually getting okay since we are actually uh, talking about without heat generation okay, only radial variation is actually considered without heat generation without heat generation so it should be actually for a, a hollow sphere there should be actually energy in and there should be actually energy out so the, therefore we can see that boundary conditions at r is equal to r1 T is equal to T1 at R is equal to R2, T is equal to T2. So these are actually the boundary conditions we can actually have. Okay. So just putting it into this, uh, it is actually very easy to find it, uh, the C1 and C2. So therefore, you are actually going to get T is equal to uh, T1 minus T1 minus T2 into R2 by R into R minus R1 divided by R2 minus R. Okay, so this is actually the condition you are actually going to get. Okay, so basically this is actually calculated. Okay, so when 
C2 calculated, calculated uh, based on R is equal to R1 and T is equal to T1. Okay. So if you remember for the cylinder, okay, for the cylinder we've got the two equations, right? Temperature. Uh, cylinder, we've got two equations for temperature. So that's why we are actually saying. So uh, 6A and 6B. <clears throat> so one C2, putting C2 uh, back into the, uh, uh, putting C back into B or putting C2 back into A, we are actually getting two equations. So that's why I, I have written over here, uh, C2 calculated based on R1. So if you're actually calculating C2 based on R2, then you are actually going to get uh, T2 plus uh, R1 by uh, uh, R, etc., etc. you will get. A little bit difference, but the profile, everything is actually going to be safe. Okay. So then you can actually see that uh, when you are actually going to differentiate it, Q is equal to minus Ka dt by dr. Okay. So if you are actually going to do it, you are actually going to get Q is equal to obviously T1, T1 minus T2 divided by R2 minus R1 divided by 4 pi k r1 r2 okay so that means the r in a spherical coordinate is equal to r2 minus r1 divided by 4 pi k r1 r2 okay. so that is actually the <coughs> uh, thermal resistance in a spherical coordinate system Okay. So if you are actually going to have series, then obviously instead of R2 and R1, so you will actually get R3 minus R2 divided by 4 pi k, R2, R3, like that you can actually get. Okay. So that is actually the thermal uh, resistance in a spherical coordinate system. And if you are actually going to do this, uh, you know, uh, there is actually here also the, uh, as the R2 increases, here you can actually see as the R2 increases, so it is actually going to increase, but again, some decreasing effect is still here, okay? so because R2 is actually still there in the new, uh, deno uh, new, uh, denominator also. Okay? But still, we don't know what is actually the effect of overall effect. And also, we know that as the R2 is actually increasing, the uh, uh, convection resistance also going to decrease. Okay? So therefore, in a spherical coordinate system also, this critical radius uh, uh, concept is also going to be there. So if you are actually going to do that differentiation and all those things, you can easily show that uh, critical radius for sphere, critical radius for sphere, R critical for sphere, it is actually going to be 2 times K by H. Okay. If it is actually insulation, it is actually K units. Okay. So 2 times K insulation, whereas for uh, a cylindrical system, it is simply uh, k by h. In the spherical system, it is two times k by h. Okay, so the critical radius it is actually going to be double than that of uh, the uh, cylindrical system. Okay, yeah. So that's actually the basis for this uh, uh, sphere, spherical system. And obviously, uh, whatever we actually said is actually based on our governing equation and integrating and all those things. Okay, you can actually try integrating that. Um, it is actually easy only. It's a bit algebraic, but it is actually very easy. You can actually do it. Or you can actually use this uh, alternate method also. Okay. So using this alternate method, I think this is actually the method shown in the uh, textbooks. Okay. Because that is actually a bit easy uh, compared to that. Okay. You can actually use uh, alternate method also. Uh, yeah. So here Q sphere, uh, sphere is also going to be minus K D2 by DR, but AD is actually going to be, what is actually the area, cross-sectional area for a sphere? What is actually the cross-sectional area for a sphere? 4 pi R square. 4 pi R square, very good. So instead of A, 2 pi R, you have to actually give 4 pi R square. Okay. And if you are actually doing that and doing these equations and doing this the same method, you can actually follow. Only the difference is instead of uh, uh, 2 pi r, uh, you are actually going to get uh, 4 pi r square. If you are actually going to do the integration, you are actually going to get uh, this uh, q as uh, the water we actually discussed now. Okay, So q in the same method, water we actually saw, uh, saw here. 
then again uh, you can actually do this uh, uh, heat conduction is actually uh, heat is same throughout with that concept you can actually go into you will actually you can actually you will be actually able to get the uh, temperature variation also okay so that method also you can actually use i think in uh, textbook this method is actually used but still i am not sure whether temperature variations are actually good so anyway, this is actually a method in which you can actually find this uh, temperature variation as well as heat flux <coughs> in a, a spherical system. Okay, yeah. So any doubt still here? So that actually concludes our uh, uh, basic derivations of uh, a 1D conduction. Okay. So we have actually seen for Cartesian, cylindrical, as well as spherical systems, and obviously here with the heat generation is also going to be there. So there is actually not much uh, differences uh, here also only the difference actually comes in the integration part you have to actually include this circuit and uh, you can actually do that okay yeah so therefore uh, we have actually seen cartesian cylindrical as well as spherical systems we saw the temperature variations within as well as the heat flux and thermal systems and all of those things okay so that actually concludes the basic derivations and all uh, obviously, we can actually see for, uh, uh, yeah, there will be actually heat conduction in 2D situations, okay? 2D situations, uh, that is actually more practical and though, but in that case, it is actually going to be a bit more involved in solving because instead of a uh, regular differential, that is actually going to be partial differential, okay? So, in the partial differential equation, the solution for a partial differential equation is actually a bit uh, tricky part, okay? Because uh, no one uh, actually have, a, uh, no one knows how to solve for a partial differential equation. So, what people are actually doing is, they are actually trying to convert the partial differential equation into a uh, ordinary differential equation by methods such as uh, variable separable forms, okay? So once they will actually convert it to uh, the order, two ordinary differential equations in X, if, if the variation we are saying is in X and Y, a partial differential equation in X and Y, it is converted to two ordinary equations, one for each X and Y. So then they will actually find the uh, solution for the ordinary differential equation and they actually sum it up. Okay. So that is actually a bit involved, uh, but uh, unfortunately that is actually not included in the uh, syllabus. Okay. So anyway, that is actually important also. So by the end of the course, if you are actually still having some time or something, or we can actually try to arrange one special class or something, and then we, I will just introduce that to uh, that. Okay. So that is actually very interesting to see how the 2D solutions can be actually done. Under. Okay. But again, the issue is that for 2D conditions, there are actually some uh, simple boundary conditions which can be actually solved. The boundary conditions are actually going to be complicated then again we have to actually go for numerical solutions okay. a simple numerical solution like a, a finite difference form or a finite volume form etc we have to actually use that's where this uh, uh, computational fluid dynamics comes into picture okay. so computational fluid dynamics that not just uh, for this uh, fluid mechanics that is mainly used for uh, heat transfer also. okay uh, anyway, that also, if the time permits, maybe one or two special class we can actually arrange so that I will give an introduction to this uh, 2D conduction as well as the uh, numerical uh, methods and those, because that is actually so much important those. Okay. Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, as our syllabus is actually concerned, this is actually the uh, what we have to actually see from the basic derivations. Of. So now we are actually going to see some applications. Okay, first application is actually this. Uh, yeah, obviously there is this uh, transient conduction also comes into picture. Okay, so transient conduction in which uh, uh, tem uh, the temperature is actually variation of time. So that we will actually see later. But uh, for now we are actually going to see one application. Okay, so which is actually being using this one uh, D analysis. Okay. So if you have any doubts till now, uh, we can actually discuss or we can actually further move. Okay, can we can we move forward? Yes, sir. So uh, we are actually going to see the uh, next part, which is actually, so this is now an application for this 1D analysis. Okay. So this is actually heat transfer from extended surfaces. Heat transfer from 
extended surface extended surfaces heat transfer from extended surfaces okay so we know that <clears throat> what happens is uh, if you are actually going to have a uh, a wall a single wall we can actually going to have We are actually going to have a single wall over here. Okay. So here, um, from here, we are actually assuming we are actually trying to cool the surface so that we are actually going to have a H and T infinity like this. Okay. So the heat transfer rate, the heat transfer rate, heat transfer rate. Okay, by convection, by convection, we can actually give us Q convection is equal to, what is Q convection? H into surface area into Ts minus T infinity. Okay, so uh, what we are actually, so what we are actually saying is, this is actually Q. Okay, so what we are actually saying is, we are actually trying to cool the surface. Okay, so the surface area is actually As. It is having the surface area AS. Okay, so we are actually trying to cool the surface. So heat lost is actually HAS TS minus T infinity. Okay, so but we are actually trying to cool it, and it is actually easy for us if we act if we can actually increase the Q. So therefore, the cooling is actually going to be much more appropriate. Okay, so what all things we can actually do to increase the Q? To increase Q, okay, so increase Q. So first, what we can actually do is uh what i can actually do, do is increase h okay so first method is actually increase h obviously that is actually uh, very easy to do and all okay so by increase h uh, how we can actually increase with the higher mass flow rate higher mass flow rate so we said that uh, h is initially h is actually a function of reynolds number prandtl number and all those things Okay. So if you actually increase the mass flow rate, what does that mean? Increase the mass flow rate means we are actually increasing the Reynolds number. So in the Reynolds number, H is actually a function of Reynolds number. So therefore, uh, H is automatically going to increase if you are actually increasing the mass flow rate. Okay. So we can actually increase the mass flow uh, uh, H with a higher mass flow rate. Uh, how we can actually increase? By using a higher uh, rate pump sample. Okay. High high rate pumps, blowers, etc. Pumps, fans, etc. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's how we can actually do this. So by increasing the, uh, you can actually go for a higher pump or something. So, but the issue is that here we are actually increasing the cost of the system. Okay. So for running cost, we are actually going to increase. Okay. And also in many of the cases, in many of the cases, what happens is that even if you are actually going to increase the maximum possible, if you are actually having a higher rate pump, so we are actually purchasing the higher rate pumps maximum available, okay, for with our money and all. So we are actually going to uh, purchase a, a higher rate pump, whatever we it is actually possible for us, and it is actually uh, a chance that even with the highest rate pump and with the highest rate, what we can actually give maximum possible. Still, there is actually chance that H is actually not sufficient. Okay, so that means, uh, but in some situation, in some situation, in some situation, maximum possible, maximum possible H is insufficient. Okay, insufficient. Okay. The maximum possible is actually insufficient and uh, again in order to have maximum possible the running cost etc are actually going to be very high so that is actually the one possibility of increasing the queue and we said that it is actually a bit uh, it is actually a bit uh, uh, it is actually a bit, bit costly and uh, and uh, also uh, running cost is also going to be high and second one is what we can actually do with the temperature okay we can actually reduce the infinity okay 
So if we are actually reducing T infinity, we are actually increasing the potential. So therefore, total heat can be actually reduced. Okay. So, but uh, but the issue is that in many of the conditions, T infinity is actually the ambient temperature itself. Okay. So we have to actually cool it to the ambient condition. So we cannot actually reduce the ambient temperature. And that is actually fixed. Okay. So basically, with the season and all, we can actually do that. But it is actually not in our control. So therefore, what we can actually say is that uh, decreasing T infinity is not feasible, not feasible in many situations. Okay, in many situations. Okay. So in, if even if we can actually uh, run a <coughs> water or something. So if you want to actually reduce it to below the ambient angle, then again, we need to actually have a chiller angle. So again, that is actually going to be a uh, uh, very costly angle. Okay. So therefore, reducing T infinity is also not a good option. And the third method is actually to increase, increase, increase what, what we can actually increase over here? Surface area. Surface area, very good. Increase is. Okay. So if you actually increase the AS, uh, obviously there is actually going to be an initial uh, cost is actually going to be uh, associated with that. But after that, once the initial cost is, if but the initial cost, if you can actually afford, okay. So then the running cost, there is actually no further running cost is actually going to be there. So there is no, uh, yeah, in, in terms of uh, uh, pump, etc., we don't have to worry about. In terms of uh, chillers also, we don't have to worry about. So once we have this uh, initial uh, material attached, then it is actually going to be there throughout. Okay, so this is actually the best method uh, in, we can actually see. Okay, so increasing tears, increasing tears, which is best method in many situations, which is best method in many situations, in many situations. Okay, in many situations. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So here we are actually saying is we are actually increasing. Uh, so we are actually increasing the surface area, but how we can actually increase the surface area? Okay. So this surface area is can be increased by attaching some surfaces. Okay. So can be increased. Increased by attaching attaching extended surfaces attaching extended surfaces okay by attaching extended surfaces okay and what is the, what are these surfaces called fins dust fins called as fins very good Sir, can't we introduce perforations to increase the same surface area? Uh, perforation, uh, perforation, but uh, what kind of perforation you are actually saying? So you are actually saying you are actually taking out some material from the surface, right? Yeah. So in that case also, it is what we are actually seeing is extended surface is what actually comes into picture. First of all, um, a taking some material from the surface that is actually in many of the cases is actually not uh, recommended. Okay, so even if you actually take some material out, so we will actually see that. Okay, so the fins are made of highly conductive materials. So it should be actually high conductive materials. Okay. <clears throat> so here, uh, what we are actually saying is, uh, instead of a simple surface over here. We are actually going to have an extended surface. Okay. So here we are actually going to have an extended surface. Okay. So that's how we are actually increasing the surface area. So that's how we are actually increasing the surface area. Yeah. Okay. So uh so therefore, we can actually say that H and T infinity is actually still here. So the, now the total area is actually going to be increased. Okay. So now the total area is actually going to be increased. 
and this portion is actually known as the uh, tip of fin and this is actually the fin okay so this is actually fin this is actually the tip of fin and this is actually the base of fin okay and in order to come to your uh, question so what happens if we can actually uh, perforate if we can actually take out some material right that's what you are actually asking right So here we can actually see that if this is actually the material we are actually seeing. Okay. So this is actually the material we are actually seeing. So you are actually uh, saying that uh, say I am actually taking out this much material. Okay. So this much material inside I am actually going to take out. Okay. So what you are actually creating is actually still an extended surface. So here you have actually made a hole okay so in that case so this yeah here again you are actually going to make a hole right here also you are actually going to make a hole okay so in that case you can see that this portion in between okay so that is kind of an extended surface now that is kind of an fin now okay so that's what i am actually saying so in this case we are not calling it as a fin, but it is still an extended surface because uh, we actually see now what is actually the definition for extended surface. Okay, so in extended surface, we are actually calling anything as extended surface if we are actually having a conduction. Okay, so conduction is actually happening uh, throughout, and also we are actually going to have two convection. Okay, a combined form of conduction and convection when is happening, we can actually call us. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, fins or extender surface. Okay, so convection that is actually happening in a direction uh, perpendicular to that of the uh, heat conduction. Okay, so in extender surface, heat transfer, heat transfer involved of heat conduction. Heat conduction within the solid, within the solid, okay, within the solid, and heat convection, heat convection from the boundary of the solid, from boundaries of solid, okay. So by that definition, we can see that whatever we actually mentioned is also a uh, extender surface. But obviously, we cannot actually call it as a, uh, uh, we cannot actually call it as a thing. Yeah. But what you actually said is actually a good idea. So in many situations, uh, it is actually being used also where such an extender surface is actually not possible. We can obviously go for this perforated surface. But again, the issue is that uh, the removal of material is actually going to be there. But in some cases, that cannot be actually done. Okay, so the uh, system is such that it is actually not going to allow us to uh, take any of the material. Okay, so if the material can be actually taken out, obviously we can actually do that. Okay, but in many places, if you are actually going to take out, it actually resembles a fin. Okay, and uh, the same method, water or same analysis, whatever we are actually going to see is also possible. Okay? Yeah, but what you actually said is actually a good idea. So we can actually take out the perforated, or uh, we can take out material and make the perforated surface. Okay. So is that clear? Yes, sir. So uh, by the definition of this extended surface, uh, another example for uh, another example for extended surface, extended surface. Is a strut that connect two walls. That connect two walls. Okay. For example, if you are having uh, two walls over here like this, okay, we are having two walls. Okay. So a strut or uh, a, some connection, a road is actually being connected between two walls. Okay. Here you can actually see there is actually heat heat transfer from here because it is actually having some temperature T1 and T2. The heat transfer is actually out, out happening over here. 
and also there is actually uh, a convection heat transfer uh, also over the body. Okay, so therefore this is also an example for extended surface, but this is not extreme. This is not probably it is not intended to uh, increase the uh, heat heat surface or heat rate or something, but still it is actually an extended surface. What are the so whatever the analysis we are actually going to do, we can actually consider it as a fit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, that is actually the fin. So now we are actually going to see a little bit onto the, uh, it little bit more onto the fins. So the first of all, what we can actually see is that, so thermal conductivity of the fin, it should be actually very high. So, because uh, if the thermal conductivity is high, we can actually see that. Okay, so wall material will be having a higher temperature, okay, and more heat is actually going to be uh, given out. Okay? So, all those analysis we will actually see after uh, doing the analysis, it will be actually more clear. But in order to start, we can actually say that uh, thermal conductivity, conductivity K of fin material, of fin material. Uh, yeah, the fin material uh, should be should be high should be high to minimize temperature variation from base to tip. Okay, so should be actually high. That is actually one thing we can actually say. Okay, so that is actually one thing. Uh, yeah. So and uh, examples, what we can actually say is. Pins are actually used to for. Can anyone say any example? Pins are used to for. Can anyone sorry, say computer pins? chips? I'm sorry. Sir, inside CPUs and uh, laptops. Yeah, inside CPUs and laptops. Uh, laptops. Uh, I am actually not sure whether how many pins are actually there, but CPU we can actually see. Okay, laptop. Oh, the back side of the laptop, you can see, sir. Back side of the laptop is there. Yeah, back side of laptop. But whatever the fan we are actually hearing is actually the cooling of a heat pipe. Okay, and to the condenser side, we are actually going to have this kind of things. Yeah, obviously. But uh, what I am actually saying is, uh, we can uh, see it clearly for a CPU with the fans. On. IC engines also, sir. Yeah, IC engines are actually going to be there. So, but IC engines, uh, for the regular high C engines, uh, we are not having this, uh, uh, or big, uh, for in the cars and all, we are not going to have this uh, uh, fins attached to that. But uh, IC engines, for the motorcycles, it is actually going to be there. Okay, In a uh, regular car engine and all, we are actually going to have some uh, liquid cooling throughout, and that liquid is actually taken to a radiator. In the radiator, we are actually going to have the fins. But for uh, motorcycles, you can actually see that uh, on the engines or more precisely engine uh, heads, cylinder heads, we are actually going to have this kind of fix. Okay. So sir, electric are, motor pumps, sir. Uh, motor pumps are actually going to be there. And transformers, if you have actually seen transformers, you can see big, big fins are actually going to be there. Okay. So anywhere, everywhere, whenever there is actually going to be a heat uh, cooling, where the heat transfer is actually going to be required more, you can actually see this kind of fins. Okay, so they are actually used for uh, uh, cooling of cooling of cylinder heads, cylinder heads in motorcycle engines. Motorcycle engines are actually going to be there. Okay, yeah, and somebody said CPU or uh, transformers, transformers. So many places we can actually see this uh, 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 this use of uh, fins, okay. and also fins. There are actually uh, various kind of fins. Various types of fins are actually going to be there. Each having its own uh, advantages or disadvantages. Okay, the uh, fins are of fins are of uh, various types, various types and shapes, various types and shapes. Such as rectangular, rectangular is actually the triangular is actually the. Sir, in certain uh, rooftop seats also, like uh, fins are provided. Like it's like just a, a molding type of thing. Uh, it's done. 
Most of the metallic sheets. Metallic sheets. Yeah, yes, so, yeah. In many of the cases, you can actually see that. Yeah. So there are many applications in which the fins are actually going to be. For example, in AC, you can actually see there is actually outdoor unit, right? So in the condenser, uh, what you are actually going to do is you are actually going to run a fan and uh, you are actually trying to cool that uh, uh, whatever the liquid inside. Okay. So for that, in that condenser also, you will be actually having this kind of fins under. Okay, so everywhere, whenever cooling is actually there, this kind of, uh, 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 yeah, this kind of fins are actually going to be there. Okay. So for example, rectangular means uh, that we actually just saw now. So rectangular, uh, it is actually going to have uh, mainly a constant cross section. Okay. Rectangular are actually going to be like this. If it is a, a triangular, okay, so in many of the cases, we are actually going to use the triangular. So because in that case, we are actually going to have some uh, benefit of uh, saving some material. Okay. Yeah. So this is actually a triangular fin. Okay. Or uh, we can actually go for an annular fin also in some cases. Okay. If we are actually going to have a cylinder or something, so around the cylinder, what we are actually going to have is actually an annular, so like uh, like a cylinder. We are actually going to have a cylinder. So around the cylinder, we are actually going to have this kind of annular piece. Okay. So this is actually rectangular, a rectangular, triangular, annular. Okay, etc. So likewise, where is uh, if it is a circular, then uh, obviously it is actually going to be. It need not to be a constant area section also. Okay. It can be actually varying cross section. Okay. Likewise, an annular fin can be actually there. Likewise, various types of uh, circular fin, circular fin. So likewise, various type of fins are also available. So when the length of the fin is actually going to be the uh, same as that of its diameter and all, then it is actually known as a pin fin. Okay, it is known as a pin fin. So like this, various fins are actually going to be available. Okay. Yeah. So now uh, we are actually going to see, uh, uh, or we are actually going to see how the temperature variation is actually going to be there, because uh, what we are actually trying to see is actually how much heat is actually going to be emitted from this. So in order to understand how much heat is actually going to be emitted, first we must actually see what is actually the temperature variation. That is also important. So how the temperature is actually varying in the fin. So once we actually see how the temperature varies, then we can actually see what is actually the total heat transfer and all those things. Okay. So that's what we are actually going to see. So basically that equation, uh, which is actually giving the basic idea of uh, the temperature variation, etc. So that is actually known as fin equation. Fin equation. Okay. So that's what we are actually going to see now. So in order to see that, uh, we are actually taking uh, any of the fin. So we can actually take rectangular or circular, any of the fin for the basic analysis. Okay. So maybe we can actually take the uh, rectangular fin. So rectangular fin we are actually trying to take. Okay. We are taking the rectangular fin. Okay, just take a big uh, fin. It's easy for us to analyze. Okay. Suppose this is actually a big fin. Okay. So now, uh, now uh, we are actually going to start. Yeah. So this is actually the x direction, and this is actually the y direction. It is going to be. Okay. So now we know that heat is actually passing in this way and all. So we are just going to take a uh, uh, element size, okay. just a small element we are actually going to see and we are actually going to analyze in that. So uh, yeah, so this element we can actually see. Okay. So this element size we are actually going to see, we are actually going to see this particular element size 
So we can actually uh, redraw it like this. This is actually this particular element size. Right. So this is this particular element size. Can anyone tell me uh, what are the heat? Uh, yeah, what, what, how, from where all heat is actually going to pass on? So we are actually saying over here, T, H and T infinity is actually going to be here. So uh, what are actually the uh, heat coming in and what are the, actually the heat going out? Okay. So this is actually X and this is actually X plus DX. Okay. X plus DX. So what should be actually the heat uh, coming in at X? Okay. So here we are actually having a QX. And what are the heat going out in this direction? it is x plus dx, right? So here, because the heat is actually coming from in this direction, Q is actually passing in this direction, in the direction of x. Okay. So are these the only two x's? Any other uh, uh, any other heat transfer? Yes, sir. There will be convective heat transfer from four surfaces, top, bottom, yeah, front. Very side. good. So Q convection is actually going to be there. In bottom also, Q convection is actually there. So uh, the sides we are actually neglecting because uh, we are actually saying the thickness is actually going to be thickness. Okay, so this is actually the thickness we can see. This is actually the thickness and this is actually the width. Okay. We are actually saying thickness is actually much less than that of the width. Okay. So therefore, uh, we can actually neglect the heat losses uh, through the sides. Okay. So uh, these are actually the four conditions in which heat is actually going to be uh, exited. Okay, so there is actually heat in, okay, and there is actually heat out, uh, or conduction in is actually there uh, for this elemental strip. Conduction in is there, and conduction out is there. But whatever heat is actually coming in, okay, so that is actually split between two. So a part of whatever coming in is actually convected out, and the rest is actually going to be conducted to the uh, next or, or conducted in the x direction okay. so whatever heat coming in from the base so here we are having the highest temperature right tb we are having the highest temperature tb so therefore heat is actually being passed in the x direction for an elemental strip so whatever heat coming in a part is actually convected out and whatever the rest is actually there that is actually again conducted in the x direction Okay, yeah. So instead of uh, uh, writing Q convection in all the directions, I'm just saying Q is actually convected. So uh, only that we have to actually consider the whole area. Okay, so that's what we are actually going to see over here. Yeah, so but uh, moving further, we need to actually have uh, uh, some assumptions. Okay, first assumptions are assumptions, it is actually 1D conduction in x direction okay. so that is actually the first assumption assumption one one d conduction in uh, x direction so that means there is no uh, in the uh, x direction or the y direction or in the z direction along the width or along the thickness there is no temperature gradient okay. so that is actually true also in may uh, because the we are actually said the uh, thickness is actually going to be uh, very less, <clears throat> okay. And also uh, the uh, convective heat transfer H and T infinity, it is actually same throughout the bit. Okay. So since the uh, thickness is actually very less, there is a low chance that the temperature gradient is actually uh, over there. And since the uniform boundary condition is actually there throughout the bit, so there is a less ja less chance that there is actually any temperature gradient in the bit direction. Also. Uh, so this is actually, uh, yeah, that, that is actually the one assumption. Okay. So uh, what, what we can actually say is that uh, as the thickness is very less, as the thickness is actually very less, thickness is very less, very less, and boundary condition and convective boundary condition. Convective 
boundary condition is same throughout throughout temperature gradient temperature gradient uh, in thickness and width directions width directions are actually negligible are negligible okay yeah so that's what we are actually saying that is actually the first assumption and second assumption is <coughs> So convective heat transfer, convective heat transfer coefficient, heat transfer coefficient, coefficient H is same throughout, is same throughout, or it is actually constant, we can say, it's actually constant throughout, okay. So then only, again, this assumption of uh, multi conversion is also going to be valid. So that is actually second assumption. And third is actually no radiation. No radiation. So no radiation is actually going to be there. Okay. And fourth one is actually constant thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity of material. Conductivity in thin material. Okay. So these are actually the four uh, uh, assumptions we need to actually make. Okay. So now we are actually going to apply this uh, energy equation over here. Okay, for this uh, differential volume, we are actually going to apply the energy equation. To apply energy equation, energy equation uh, for differential volume, for differential volume or differential element. Okay. So I'm sorry, I'm... Uh, my writing is actually a bit. Uh, so, is it legible? Can anyone, everybody uh, read my handwriting? I just uh, forgot to write a bit through. So can everybody uh, read this? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Fine, Fine, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, therefore, uh, the energy condition, what we actually said is what are the heat coming at X location? That is actually, obviously, it is actually going to be conducted out a part. And another part is actually going to be convected out. Okay, so this convection, what we are actually calling it as a d uh, d convection because this is just a small portion of the convection. The Q convection means the full energy that is actually being convected. So here we are talking about a small area, okay, small surface area only. We are actually con uh, considering. So we are actually calling it as a small uh, part of the convection. Okay? So what are the heat conducted in? is actually a small part is actually going to be converted out and the rest is actually continued to be in the conduction direction. So that one we can actually call it as a 35. This is actually the basic energy equation. So from here we need to actually derive. So but likely for us we now are actually familiar with what is actually this Fourier's law, uh, the Newton's law of cooling etc. We have to simply put uh, those things into this. Then we will actually get. But again we know that from the Taylor series expansion we know Qx plus dx is equal to qx plus uh, d by dx of qx into dx. Okay. So putting this uh, into equation 33, so therefore we can actually get that 35 gives, 35 is actually going to be, uh, yeah, from here, if you are actually taking it over here, so it is kind of the same thing. Okay. We are actually taking it over here. So we can actually see that d by dx of, uh, qx into dx okay, plus dq convection is equal to zero. Okay. So that's uh, what the equation we are actually getting. But we know that uh, uh, qx is equal to minus k ac dt by dx, where ac is actually the cross-sectional area. Okay. ac is uh, cross-sectional area area which can be actually vary so here we actually saw for a constant uh, <coughs> yeah, here we actually saw for a constant uh, cross section area but it can be actually used for this uh, triangular or it can be actually used for for this uh, circular okay so anything can be actually used so we are actually now trying to reduce it for a uh, 
common one, common equation. So area is AC is actually the cross sectional area, which might be actually varying, okay? which can be varying with X, which can be varying along, varying along X, okay? which can be actually varying along X. So first we are actually going to see for this uh, uh, common equation, then we will actually see what happens in AC is actually a constant cross section. And also <coughs> DQ convection is equal to H into DAS T minus T infinity, right? Where DAS is surface area of the element, surface area of the, uh, of the element. Okay. We have actually considered only a very small element. So that's why we are actually saying it is actually the DAS, the surface area, surface area. Surface area means the full surface area we are talking about, the throughout. So therefore, in that case, we don't have to consider a Q convector from top, Q convector from bottom, etc. We don't have to. Okay. So if you are actually taking the full area, so then sites also we can actually take into consideration. So if you are actually saying the perimeter is actually going to be 2W plus 2T, then obviously we are actually considering what is actually happening in this whole. But if you are actually saying T is actually much less than that of W, then we can actually say uh, W into DX. That also we can actually say. Okay. So that is actually the differential area or uh, DAS is actually the surface area of the element. Okay. So therefore, you can actually write as uh, minus K D by DX of minus k d by dx yeah k is actually constant right so we said in the assumption itself we said k is actually constant that's why we have actually taken the k out into ac into dt by dx we cannot say ac out because we said ac is actually a function of x into dx plus dx is actually there because uh, in uh, in the equation of dx here one dx is actually there qx is actually what the equation we have written minus k we have actually taken off plus h into das into t minus t infinity is equal to zero okay so that's what we have written so we can actually rearrange it a little bit so how we are actually rearranging it is d by dx of ac dt by dx we are actually de de dividing this minus k dx uh, to this side so we will get h by k DAS by DX into T minus T infinity is equal to Z. Okay. So this one is actually equation 36. And this is actually the general form of energy equation for an extended surface with the very cross section area. Okay. So this is general equation. General equation for extended surface extended surface uh, yeah, general uh, general a uh, form for energy equation i'm sorry general energy equation general energy equation for extended surface with varying with varying cross section area okay so this is actually the uh, very basic definition and whatever the uh, geometry we have actually seen so for all the geometries we can actually apply it over here so if we can actually know how the ac is actually varying with the dx and the air surface is actually varying with the dx then <clears throat> we can actually put it into this and we can actually differentiate it and we can actually come up with a uh, much uh, uh, lesser complicated equations okay so that's what we are actually going to see for tomorrow. Okay. So fins of uh, uh, uniform cross section. So here we are actually talking about the varying cross sections. So, but in many of the conditions, we might be actually having this uniform cross section, which is actually the simplest one. So we will actually analyze in detail for the sim uh, symbol uh, uniform cross section area cross section. Okay. Yeah. So if you have any doubts, we can discuss. Anything?
Okay, okay, then uh, we can stop the class here. Uh, the next class on Thursday, we will actually discuss for you. Still, I can see only 62 students are there. Almost 20 students are actually not attending classes. Okay, so obviously I will be actually uh, doing some uh, surprise test or something throughout the uh, course. So uh, those who are actually not attending will be actually penalized. Okay, okay then. Have a nice day to all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.